In this video, what we're going to be doing is we're given a function. We want to take its derivative to find the critical numbers for this function or critical values, and then make those x values into points by plugging them back into the original function. After we do that, these are the values that we could have maximums or minimums at. So we're going to use the second derivative test to determine whether they're actually going to be maximums or minimums. Um, so first of all, what we want to do is get started by taking the derivative. So I'm going to zoom in here. Taking the derivative g prime of x, we're going to use the power rule. And with this one, we can bring the exponent down, multiply it by 6, the coefficient out in front. So we get 18. We'll reduce the exponent by 1. And then we kind of repeat on these next two terms. So we'll bring the 2 down, multiply it by the 63, get 126. Reduce the exponent by 1, so it's x to the first power now. And finally, we have 180 is the derivative of 180x. All right, now that we've taken the first derivative, we need to figure out when does this derivative equal zero? So to figure out when it's gonna equal zero, let's try to do some factoring and use the zero product property. Now, all of these terms have an 18 in common. So let's first factor out the 18. So that'll leave us with x squared plus seven x plus 10. And to figure out where it equals zero, we can factor a little bit more with that second degree polynomial. I believe this factors as x and x. Two times five will make the 10. If they're both positive, they're gonna to add together and make that seven, our coefficient on the middle term. From here, we know that when x equals negative two, that factor will equal zero. Therefore, since everything's um, multiplied together, it'll make the entire uh, left-hand side equals zero. And for x equals negative five, that second factor is gonna be equal to zero. All right, these are what we refer to as our critical numbers or critical values is another way to say this. But these are the only values where we could have possible, uh, possible maximums or minimums. All right. Next thing what we'd like to do is actually go ahead and test whether these are going to be maximums or minimums based on the second derivative test. So the second derivative requires taking the second derivative. So I'm gonna go back instead of the factored version of the first derivative, I'm going back up to the first way we wrote it right here. So again, what we can do is take the second derivative by using the power rule. So we'll bring the two down in front, multiply it by the 18. So that'll give us 36. X to the first power is reduce the exponent by one. And then the derivative of 126 X is just gonna be 126. So that's a linear term. And the derivative of 180 is gonna be zero because it's a constant. All right, to test each one of these x values that we listed up above, negative two and negative five, what we want to do is we want to plug them into the second derivative. So we'll substitute negative two in for each of our x's. So we get 36 multiplied by negative two plus 126, which will be negative 72 plus 126, which will equal positive 54. All right, what this tells us about our, our function is it is gonna be concave up. And we base that on when we plugged in a negative two, we got a positive value coming out. It's not so important that it's a positive 54, it's mostly that it's a positive uh, value at all. So concave up on a graph is gonna have this sort of look to it. So that's gonna indicate that we get a minimum on our graph. All right, so at an x value of negative two, we're gonna get a minimum. Let's do the same test, the second derivative test, using the negative five. So we're gonna plug negative five in. So we have 36 times negative five plus 126. In this case, we get um, negative 54 overall, uh, because this was negative 180 plus 126. So that'll give us negative 54. With being a negative value, that tells us concave down. All right, and if it's concave down, that's gonna be a maximum. 
concave down, that part of the graph is going to look like this. All right, the very last thing that we need to do is actually find where the maximum and the minimum occur. We know where they occur, those x values, but we need to know the actual maximum or minimum, which would be the y values. All right, so to get those, what we're going to do um, and create these critical points is we go back to the original function, g of x, before we took any derivatives, and we're going to plug these in. So we say g of negative 2 is going to be 6 times negative 2 cubed plus 63 times negative 2 plus 180 times negative 2. And that's going to do some simplifying down. Um, we end up getting negative 156. All right, so that's the ordered pair. The critical point, negative 2, comma, negative 156. And we already said that at that value, we're going to get a minimum. The other critical point is going to occur at negative 5. So we need to, again, go back to the original function plug that x value in and we'll get a y value to go with it. So negative five cubed plus 63 times negative five squared plus 180 times negative five. A little reducing down here, we should get negative 75. Therefore we get the ordered pair negative five comma negative 75, which is gonna be the point where we have a maximum as we saw over on the left-hand side from the second derivative test. Now, as far as clarifying this, the maximum is actually at negative 75. The maximum is negative 75. The minimum is negative 156. It occurs at the x value. So we get a minimum of negative 156 that occurs at negative two. And very similarly over there with the maximum and that critical point. All right, hope this clarifies some of it. Um, and that's how we work the second derivative test. Um, with calculus. Good luck.